What's up YouTube, how you doing? This is Mr. Tybox123 and we are back in this video for an unboxing and first look at this, the brand new Apple iPad Mini. So, sorry I've been away for such a long time guys, I've just been catching up on so much work after my holiday, it just bogged me down so much, I just did not have time to make any videos. But like I say, we're back with the unboxing of the brand new iPad mini. Got mixed thoughts on this really, it's a product that I never thought Apple would ever release, was a kind of 7.9 inch tablet, I really never thought that they would actually come out with this. But they have, and it's sitting in a space alongside things like the Nexus 7 which I absolutely adore so it's going to be very interesting if worth paying the extra money for this the iPad mini over the Nexus 7 is going to be worthwhile over the next few weeks we've got loads and loads of decent products coming in we've got the Nexus 4 phone I'll be getting in we've got the Nexus 10 tablet with that beautiful resolution as well absolutely can't wait for that one we've also got a couple of Windows Phone uh, 8 devices along with the Microsoft Surface and also the Galaxy Note too so plenty of stuff happening over the next few weeks glad to be back with you guys as well thank you for your continued support so the iPad mini let's actually get into the unboxing itself I've gone with the 64 gig black version mainly because in terms of color I've got the white main you know the big 9.9 .9, uh, yeah 9.7 inch iPad so I decided to go black with this one I've also got a white iPhone as well so going to go black with this one and see how it comes out. I've gone for the 64 gigabyte version because I'm always running out of room on my 32 gigabyte normal sized iPad. So gone with the 64 gig on this one and this came in at 429 pounds, which is a reasonable amount of money when you compare it to the likes of a Nexus 7 for example, which is significantly less, albeit that it doesn't have the 64 gigabytes of storage. But still, if you want to, you can go with the 16 gigabyte version, and that starts off, I believe, at 259 or 269 pounds. So, let's get into the unboxing and take a look at this new iPad mini. So, you guys have seen these Apple packages a million times before, I'm not gonna bore you to death with it, but it is kind of strange that it is so small. If you think the iPad uh, box that it comes in is actually quite significantly bigger than this, even though it's only just under a two inch decrease in size, it just feels a hell of a lot smaller. But that's just in the box. Let's get this thing open and have a look at the product itself. Now, like I say, I'm kind of interested to see if this is gonna be a decent product or not, because I just never thought Apple would actually release it. But there we go. There's the front of the product. To be honest, not very much to see at this point. And crikey, it really does feel extremely small. So that's me holding it one-handed there. And uh, it, it really is th very thin and, and very, very light as well. It, it feels a lot, lot lighter than the standard iPad does. So let's whip off this wrap in here and take a look at the black color. So there you go. That's the back of it with that slate color, that black color. And I've got to say, it does look extremely nice. Build quality just seems exceptional with that polished bezel as well. Much the same, that kind of polished bit that goes around the outside, that sort of edge that it has on it that they machine to an actual shine there, as you can see on the, on the corner here. And that's the same as the iPhone 5. So it really does feel on first impressions extremely nice. So on the back there, we've got the rear camera on the top. And I'm glad to say they have put it on the top. We've got the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. I hate having it on the bottom of the iPhone 5. Let me know what you guys think. Also on the top there, we've got a microphone and we've also got on the top the on off switch as well which is kind of strange obviously on the ipad i know on the ipad it is on the top we've also got the mute or rotation switch and then we've also got the volume up down buttons and they do look of exceptional build quality i've got to say and then on the bottom we've got that lightning connector as well as you can just about see there along with the speakers as well on the other side nothing at all and then on the front, we have got the FaceTime camera there at the top. And then on the bottom, we've just got the home button. So let's turn this one on. 
Now I would actually have preferred to have the 3G or 4G variant of this, but that doesn't come out for another couple of weeks. And where this is kind of small in size as well, I thought, you know, maybe I'll just use it with like a 3G MiFi or something like that. So there we go. That is now powering on, as you can see. Now, in terms of the actual pixel density, we've all got used to, or some of us have got used to the Retina display, not only on the MacBook Pro, but obviously on the iPad as well. And I am a big ambassador for the Retina display. I know some people think it's just a waste of time, but I absolutely love it. The crispness of text alone is a reason to have that new Retina display. And the fact that this hasn't got it, and it's actually got a very, very low PPI, not even as much as the Nexus 7, is gonna cause me a little bit of a quandary as to whether or not this is gonna be a decent device. But we'll take a look at that and obviously come back to that in the review. So, there it is itself. Obviously you've got to choose the language as well now. So I'll just choose British English for me. Next. Just show you the, the screen there. And you can see you can see immediately that the text is not quite up to scratch with that of the Retina iPad, the iPad 3 or 4th generation now as they have started to call it. It's definitely not up to scratch with that. You can just about make out the pixels and it just doesn't have that crispness either. But, you know, maybe it will still be a decent screen when we get into it. Now, in fact, if we actually compare that to the Nexus 7, which is what a lot of people are gonna be doing, the Nexus 7 is considerably cheaper than this and also has a much, much higher PPI than this does as well. So I think this device really, when you're coming to choose between devices, is going to be probably all about the ecosystem and the applications that you can get for it. I'm just popping in my uh, Wi-Fi password now so we can connect up to that. And you can definitely see, I mean, you probably can't tell on the camera because the Obviously 1080p probably won't be up to par, but you can definitely tell the difference between the text on this and the text on the Retina iPad. Big, big difference. It's just activating the iPad now, but it does fit in one hand. I actually thought it'd be too big to fit in one hand. I thought the guy in the advert had huge hands, but it does fit in one hand, and it's kind of nice to hold as well. It does, it does sort of make you wonder whether or not this should have been the size for the original iPad um, and then maybe brought out the, the bigger one at a later stage because it does seem a lot more convenient to have this kind of size. That The big iPad really is a lot, lot bigger than this and in fact, I'll just take it out of uh, the case that I've got it in and just show you a quick comparison of the sizes between the two. So, getting all stuck here. So, normal iPad, mini iPad and you can see there is quite a significant difference between these two and in fact the iPad 3 is a lot heavier than this mini iPad and I mean a lot heavier it feels almost as if it's more than double the weight extremely heavy huge huge size difference between these two products and in fact if we put them on top of each other you can get an even better feel for just how much bigger the previous iPad is, or not the previous, but the larger iPad is. So there's a big difference between them. And in fact, I'll just get my beloved Nexus 7, which I've kind of fallen in love with over the past few months, just to show you a size comparison of the Nexus 7. We'll just put the Nexus 7 over the top of it, and you can see not really a huge difference in terms of size. The Nexus 7 is considerably thicker than the mini iPad. If I just get a, a close up there, you can just about make it out. The, I, the Nexus 7 does have that kind of big curvature to it, which hides a lot of its thickness. But if you actually put them together like that, and you take into account that depth that we have here on the back of the Nexus 7, it is considerably thinner than the Nexus 7. In terms of weight, it actually feels a little bit lighter than the Nexus 7 as well. But in terms of the actual screen real estate, if we just hold both of these two up, you can see that the screen real estate on the iPad is significantly more than that of the Nexus 7. Uh, the Nexus 7 has bigger borders around it 
and the difference in the screen size is actually quite noticeable as well. So, you know, we'll come back to that and we'll maybe do some comparisons between the two if that's what you'd like to see. But we're just finishing off the initial installation here of the iPad mini set up as new iPad. Sign in, I've just got to put my Apple ID in. So pop this in. So here we go guys. There is the actual main home screen there of the iPad. I'm just gonna bring this really, really close in and see if you guys can actually make out the pixels themselves on the text. And in fact, what we'll do is we'll actually hold up the, the iPad 3 next to it. It's upside down at the minute, but if I just hold that really close up, you can see, I can actually see on the screen here of my video camera, the clarity of those letters. And then if you hold this one up, I think there's a significant difference there. And in fact, there would be obviously because this is a retina and this is not. And I, I do think that it's a bit of a mistake from Apple to not go with the retina display, even if it would have delayed it a little bit, just to keep in the theme of all their latest products having that retina display. And to me, it really does make a huge difference in terms of reading and writing and various other bits and pieces as well when you're actually doing any kind of productivity uh, with the iPad. But anyway, guys, there's the unboxing. I have rabbited on a little bit, but I've been missing you guys for a few weeks now. So, there we go, the iPad mini. I'm gonna be back tomorrow with another unboxing of another Apple product, and then we will also be back very, very soon with a whole range of products. Like I said, the Nexus 4 phone, the Nexus 10 tablet, the Windows phones from Nokia and HTC, maybe even Samsung as well, the Microsoft Surface, whole bunch of decent products coming out over the next few weeks that I'm gonna get my hands on. So there we have it, guys, the iPad mini. Thanks very much for watching. Please do hit that like button for me, guys, and I will see you all in the next video. See ya.